Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Just need to thank the patrons. Thanks to Alan, Billy, Blizz, Brett, Caleb, Chen, Christoph, David, Edia, Eric, Gary, Joey, the other Joey, Matthew, Miguel, Mathaldu, Raymond, Rodrigo, Sack Chief, and Z. My Patreon and Play Asia affiliate links are in the description. Enjoy the video. I have a lot of PC VR games. I've got Pavlov over there. I've got Gorn. I have bloody Rick and Morty Virtual Reality over there. I've got Sirento, Soundboxing, Space Pirate Trainer, Gun Club, Operation Warcade War. Uh, onward, there's Beat Saber there, which is the really obvious one. You've got all sorts of games here of all different kinds that are all VR, like best examples that VR has. But my first video is on this. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out that. I know, it's definitely not the most Definitely not the first thing most people would start with when they do a video on a VR game for the first time that isn't like PlayStation VR, but... Well, this actually just came out with its VR DLC. It was five bucks and... Well, funnily enough, I didn't actually own the original the original Galgun 2 yet, so I sent an email into P-Cube saying, Hey, you mind seeing a little review code? And they were like, yeah, sure. So I did. So there's no real other explanation for this madness. So, let's go have a quick look around. Funnily enough, a fair few of these settings don't actually matter in VR mode. The only things you actually want to worry about are the VR settings, but I have played this game in both regular mode and VR mode, and it's the same game, basically, but nevertheless, we'll go and have a look around. So it says windowed 1080p, but it's not windowed. It's a full screen window, probably. And it's weird that you can turn off the dynamic shadows and blue, but the fact is the dynamic shadows actually start off as off, which is not a great sign of your PC port being any good. It's usually not a good sign. You can change your languages here. They recently added Chinese and um, Korean, I think it was, alongside this uh, patch. You have a few things here, but again, you can only, um, some of these are only related to the, what should I call it, the regular control gameplay. These two things here are only uh, useful in the actual gameplay in the regular mode as well. But the nice thing is, is that you can actually rebind everything, which is cool. And at the same time, it's not really necessary because the controls they got here on both controller and um, just your regular keyboard and mouse both work absolutely fine. I tried both, especially because my controller batteries died, but I tried both. They all work pretty good, actually, all things considered. Music effects and voices, don't really need to fiddle with them. The balancing is pretty good. And the fact that you have to automate, um, you have to manually adjust your eye height in this game is actually kind of annoying because it's kind of hard to get it right and it seems that they don't really have the best idea of how eye height works so I've just got it on the lowest and I play this game sitting down so it actually works pretty well. You can also reverse the controllers so that uh, the so that the gun's on the left and the sweeper's on the right but we're not going to do that and you can also turn on and off quick turn which is oh I can't actually show you out in the menu Alright, whatever. So we'll just hit continue. There is also a score attack mode, but we're not going to go into that because we don't really need to. So we'll just hit continue. Uh, notably, controls in this game are a little weird. I play this on a Windows Mixed Reality, which is basically got everything that the Vive does. So if you see the, like a little bit of jittering going on like this, it's actually the controller and uh, not me. But the weird thing is that they actually use the touchpad to navigate the menu. So you press up and down on that and then you pull the trigger. Same thing with uh, left and right. So it's actually going to post in the menu, which is in exactly the same place. And we can, and here's the quick turn function for you. You press the left touchpad. Also, you use the uh, D-pad, I think it is, in the main game. Funnily enough, this game actually has, like, it plays regularly on keyboard and mouse and gamepad. But it kind of feels like it was designed for VR from the very beginning. Mainly because of how the game works. It really does feel like it was built for VR and just never made it to it until now. The original game actually had a VR mode code, in, some VR mode code in it, and they modded it in like the first uh, non-patched version, but oh well. So, there's a cutie over there, that's one of the... Well, I'm not going to call her a heroine, mainly because she ends up turning into a demon partway through the story, but 
she, that's not a spoiler, don't worry about it. It's Gal Gun, there's no spoilers in Gal Gun. But, yeah, she, she's one of the cuties. We can actually talk to her, but we're not going to do that right now. We're going to go and actually have a look at the gameplay first. We do have the option to rendezvous. We're not going to talk about that just yet. We can even change the outfits. Now, notably this game actually has an absolute ton of DLC in it. And it's a little bit bizarre. Because the DLC packs are like $7.95 for an outfit and two accessories. And it's a little weird to charge that much. But at the same time, I'll take that over paid DLC for anything major any day. I can understand why VR was DLC. Probably because I needed to do some work on it. But, yeah. Better consumables than anything else. You can see your inventory including uh, the snacks that you have for all the girls. There's tons of snacks. You get heaps of them. So, if you're worried about, oh, I don't know what to give this girl, although it's pretty obvious, like, uh, a popular treat for girls who want to snack as cute as they are. Well, that's literally everybody in the damn game. But there's a gamer girl in here, and you can give her Packy, and she will talk to you without fail. So, it's nice. It's, uh, it's nice, because they give you so much of it. It's like you don't have anything to worry about. And you've got some other stuff here, like you can upgrade the Demon Sweeper as you go through. But I've been playing for about three hours and I've only got one upgrade, so it doesn't really matter much. Options just brings you back to this, not too much of a big deal. And you can also come here to see the uh, VR controls. There doesn't seem to be any changing of them you can do. I'm not entirely sure why you would, but I don't think you would need to either way, so... Sure. What's all that? Reset camera? Oh. Oh, that's, um, that's actually kind of new. I didn't know that was a thing. God, I should pay closer attention to the tip. Never mind. So, we have a few quests and things that we can do here. And there's actually, like, you can do whatever one of these you like. You can do two per day, but you only have 20 days in order to actually get the amount of demon points you need. So, you can choose how you want to go between... You can choose uh, what missions you want to do and how you want to go between them. So it's kind of nice. We'll go play a story mission because you can see the little icons over here that give you the, the mission types. So, you, and you can also come over to the replayable menu and actually replay any quest in the game if you want to. I'm not entirely sure why you would do this just yet. Doesn't seem to be any achievements based around that, so whatever. But we'll hit up the Demons Discovered main story mission. It's going to take a minute before we actually get into this um, actual gameplay. Also, I apologize about the fact you can't see the subtitles. We'll get to that. マスター、悪魔の反応があったのはこの辺りです。今までの御活躍で悪魔撃退ポイントも結構溜まってきていますし、この調子ならノルマ達成も夢じゃないです。今のマスターと私ならばきっとうまくいくはず。はい、王です。I'm not going to say anything, love. Don't blame you. Alright, so. Gal Gun. If you've never played this before, this will come as quite a shock. But, oh well. So, hello. Young school girl in swimsuit. Doink. 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 So, oh, hi. So, this is Gal Gun. It is ridiculous. So, it is the... No, actually, I think it's the fourth in the series of absolutely ridiculous cute girl shoot-em-ups. Quite literally, actually. So, you play as a guy who has somehow got himself into a little bit of a mess with a bloody angel of some kind. And you have to go around, basically, you're trying to get Demon Buster points. Demon Buster points are a little bit strange in the sense that you basically get them by busting demons. And... For some reason, you also get them for shooting girls. I'm not entirely sure why. But the, the idea is that you, you've got these pair of goggles on. The demon-esque goggles or something like that. And they make you inherently popular to every girl in the school, but of course the girls are the only ones that can get possessed by the demons. Therefore, you need to shoot them. However, the goggles also have a side effect of making you the most, most popular guy in school, which is why you're climbing in the bloody shoe lockers in order to avoid getting the crap beaten out of you by all the random girls. You can also do ridiculous stuff like that. 
Also, I'm getting shot from behind. Beat it. So, yes. Of course, it's all just complete and justification for the fact that you're shooting girls with what appears to be a bloody pheromone gun. It's absolutely bizarre, and it always has been. Also, VR mode, poke around corners, try not to bump into the bloody walls. Also, yeah, sometimes you can play levels bloody Metal Gear Solid style. There are actually levels that kind of rely on you doing this as well, because kind of... Oh, dear. Oh, girls not before me ass. Can't let me go for the Chenko. Right, where's the... There are some other mechanics you've got as well. Like, you saw that... Ooh, hello, that's the friendly angel. We don't want to... Uh, we don't want to suck her up, but thankfully I don't think we can. So, there are some other mechanics. Every girl has a weak spot. Every single one. And this, the weak spot is in one of three places. There. There. Or there. So, you need to be... Pretty precise with your shots if you want to get them. You can also just spam, but it's not worth as many points. Hello, would you, where all of you come from? You can also stare at them, and if you stare at them for long enough, they'll... Especially in the eyes. If you stare at them in the eyes for long enough, which I don't know why you would do this, by the way. This, this mechanic seems entirely out of place. Like, if you stare at a girl for long enough, they will more or less become vulnerable to being attacked from anywhere. Like, you'll be able to shoot them anywhere and it'll be an instant kill. And again, I don't know why you would spend the time to do it when you've got all of them swarming you like bloody ants from Earth Defense Force. Especially when you can just go through, move the cursor over, find the weak spot and just wipe the floor with them in one shot, but... You know, if there's any particular girl you want to take a good long look at, you can do that if you like. There are a few other things as well. The, de the little mini demons actually make the girls invincible. You can't actually shoot them anywhere until you get all the demons off them. They won't take any damage whatsoever. So you have to shoot them off. And then you can suck them up using your Demon Sweeper. And if you hold the Demon Sweeper for long enough, it goes Super Demon Sweeper. And you can use that to do a surprise strip of everyone in the near vicinity. It's a little bit bizarre if I'm being honest, but it works. Where's your weak spot? There it is. However, the Demon Sweeper only has limited energy, so you can't... You can't go to using the Demon Sweeper all the time. If you do, you'll end up in a pretty bad spot. However, there is something you can do with it. You can actually just throw out really quick shots with it. And if you do that, it'll actually stun the girls for a second. So it actually helps out quite a bit when you've got five or six of them around you. And you need time to get around to shooting them all. So it's, it's a nice thing to have. You do, of course, also get ridiculous shots like this one. You can actually look around in the VR as well. This is this is actually how it works in the in the real game as well. You can you, you're able to move up and down, look to your left and look to your right, and this actually comes in handy once or twice because girls can be hiding around things like pillars, and you can just you know duck your head around a pillar and shoot them that way. It's incredibly silly, but. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't really enjoyable and just how ridiculous it was. Not to mention it does look intensely cute at the same time that you're doing it, like... It's adorable. Obviously there's enough, enough panty shots to get to the most edgy of edgy men enjoying themselves, but that's not here nor there. <laughs> there she is again. Oh, uh, that, that's our friendly angel, and she has this annoying tendency to get in the way. You do have health in this game if the if the enemies do get too close to you and manage to propose rather violently, whether it be literally throwing letters at you or 
and by letters I mean letters. They actually come and give you physical letters along with throwing phrases out at you. It's a, it's bizarre, but of course everything in this game is bizarre. Yeah, but yeah, if they get too close to you for too long, they'll be able to do damage, and if they do damage, that is a bad thing, because if they do, then they get... If they do, then, well, they hurt you. And if you get hurt too much, that's the end of the game. However, the game is actually pretty easy. They don't usually send out more than three or four at a time, and they might send out, like, say, five or six at most. They might send out five or six at most uh, towards the end of a stage, but usually no more than that, and five or six at the end of the stage you can absolutely deal with without a problem, because, well, you'll have most of your health at that point, and it won't be hard to get rid of all of them. You can still take a hit, but at the same time you will lose your combo, which gets you less points, and then it tallies up how many demons you defeated just by full-on shooting them, or by capturing them with the vacuum gun. You'll also get your free candy there, and you'll get to go to another story cutscene. And I'm going to talk over this one just for the purpose of keeping this moving along. But the problem with the cutscenes is that now I'm on a Windows Mixed Reality headset, and I think its field of view is actually slightly lower than your traditional VR headset like an Oculus Rift or a HTC Vive. Because I actually have trouble seeing the subtitles. They're really close to the bottom of the screen, and the sweet spot on these things isn't great. So you might end up having a bunch of them. You might having a uh, you might have a bunch of subtitles down here that you can't bloody see. I don't think you can see it at all on your screens because of the way I'm recording this. So you might understand the problem I'm having. But yeah. And it also appears that <laughs> the game itself is just a little bit weird with its terminology. It, the plot is just bonkers. It's always bonkers. It's... Well, the plot is always bonkers because it's bloody Gal Gun. I played Gal Gun Double Piece and as much as I enjoyed it, it was absolute bonkers there too. You claim to be an expert, you're actually a... You're actually kind of useless. You're like Aqua. Oh well, be cute, aren't you? Unfortunately, it doesn't let you get too close, but oh well. Oh, I'm, look I'm looking straight at my computer. Thank God. If I was actually recording this via the Windows Mixed Reality uh, view, I'd be able to show you some cool features of this tech, but, well, can't do that just right now. I wonder if this actually looks like... Flashlight on! No, it doesn't actually pay attention. Okay, so here we are in the bedroom. It's been, uh, I was already halfway through that day, so I only got one mission done. And this is where we can come to actually talk to the other main girl. There are a lot of girls in this game, but there is a... There are two main girls. The one you saw earlier, Nanako, and Shiru is across... I think it's Shiru anyway, but if we come over here and sit down first, we actually get some more free stuff. I'm not even kidding. We get free, um... We get free stuff for doing relatively well. So, you know... Can't, can't be against that. You can also go and have a little bit of a look around his room. There's not that much to see, but what there is there to see is actually kind of funny. So if we... Wait for the screen to load back in again. We can actually do this. We can we can have a look through the guy's drawers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what the funny thing is? You see that magazine? We go and have a look over there. We can have a look at his bomb shelf, and you can see he's got the same copy at least three times. I don't know why, but this guy's a bit silly. You can also use the demon sweeper in here, but it doesn't actually do it. Too. You can shoot her and ask her for a, well, just a general chat, but she doesn't have that much to say. Although, apparently there are multiple endings again in this game. There's uh, one with the angel, two with the two main girls each, and then there's a sixth one, which is Param, so that's pretty obvious. So let's actually go and talk to one of the girls. Hello, you want some candy? It actually shows, that little picture there actually gives you an idea of what to give them. 
Except, um... Hang on, I'll just give it some random hat. There we go. Oh, no event? That's unfortunate. There's a few events in this game, actually, but strangely enough, she doesn't seem to want to talk today. That's unfortunate. She's cute. She's the best girl. Uh, she does nothing but spend all day in a room, play games, and heal her broken leg because she hates strangers. Little bit close to home, gotta say. So, if we go to sleep, that'll let us actually go on to the next day, and the game's got 20 days- Oh yeah, Gal Gun posters on the wall, by the way. Those are unlockables that you can get. You can customise your room here, which is a kind of a neat touch. But you also, uh, yeah, you only have 20 days to get stuff done, so you've got to get through the story missions and stuff as fast as possible, and also have those conversations and try and get through them the right way and all that. Yeah, you can do that if you like. So if we go to the menu and go to stage select, we can actually go play another mission. And just to give you an idea of how ridiculous this stuff can get, let's play, I believe, this one. And if this girl looks familiar, it's because she is. Her and her sister are actually from the, from Gal Gun Double Piece. I was, I was actually kind of happy to see them turn up. Although they're getting their asses hand to them at this point. For example. Does this situation look familiar? Oh, I bet it does. Because this is... This is the exact situation that they were in in Gal Gun Double Piece. Only double. And it's kind of glorious. But it also lets me show off a funny little feature of this game. They actually have searching missions. Hang on, I can skip the rest of this cutscene. Let's do that. So yeah, this is a uh, this is a search mission. Funnily enough, you actually have a few places you can go look around, and you have to go looking for the uh, demon figures, actually. And I know where they all are because I've played this mission already, but. I know there's one in here. Okay, maybe not. Did I move them? Yeah. Uh, huh. Oh, there it is. Yeah, they've actually moved them from the last time I played this mission, I think. So, yeah. You actually have to go and find like little objects like that just here in the world. And once you do, you well, you don't have you don't usually have to fight. In the other search missions that are like, it's pra it practically takes on a bloody Metal Gear Solid style searching system where you have to hide in order to avoid taking on waves of girls. And it's actually kind of a neat system. Probably should have shown that one off instead of showing those two stuck in the window, but this is Galga. You can't exactly show much else in this game, huh? Uh... Let's look carefully, but... Over here somewhere. That's a good question. Where is this stuff? Oh, hi. That goes with your bonus points. They're always booked. There you are. And here I come again. A chair creaking under me. I'd be lying if I said it was any sort of difficult. Like I said before, that the game is surprisingly easy. There's not that much... There's not that much difficulty in it. It might be harder if you're going for a specific route or specifically the harem ending. I imagine they'll make that the hardest just to make it the most reasonable in that sense. But... 
yeah, it's it's not hard in the slightest. I've been able to get through it nice and easily on both keyboard and mouse and gamepad and virtual reality. Virtual reality is probably the easiest just because it's easier to aim. On the gamepad, you actually get a zoom button, which is a nice benefit. But, there, I see you. You know, on the gamepad, you get a zoom button, which makes things a fair bit easier. These little, these little bitches. I hate these ones. They're bloody. They have tons of health. Oh, and you can't shoot them, by the way. Yes, that is actually a thing. Uh, hang on, I can look around and see where the last one is. I think. Yeah, it's over there. Behind the fence. Or the shelf, I can say. Hang on, I remember. Look at these. That's bizarre. Usually it's there. Oh, there, there you are! You sneaky little bitch. <laughs> oh dear. And the final type of mission that you have is something I'm not going to show off because it feels even longer. That's one of my main complaints about... Yeah, I think I can skip this. Oh, no, I don't think I can actually. I'm pressing the buttons, I won't bring up the menu. Uh, that is one of my main problems with this game though. It's mainly the stage length. Uh, they go for one or two minutes longer than they really should. They're just a bit too long. Which is a little bit disappointing. It feels like they'd be a little better if they were a little more intense and a little shorter. Okay, there we go, now I can skip it. But yeah, otherwise the missions themselves are actually relatively... Relatively decent, as I said, they're easy, but it's at least enjoyable with how many different ways you can get about the place, and you are actually relatively... You are actually... Uh, you actually have multiple routes through all sorts of different places, so... Oh, okay. We'll, we'll play one more mission here, and then I'll show off some ridiculous stuff. You'll understand, trust me. Suck up all the demons. I do have a couple of other issues, but again, they're mainly the VR's fault in the sense that it's my hardware that's doing it. Uh, as I said before... Oh, wow, they are actually putting up the intensity a bit. That's, um... Oh, yep, I got hit in the face by that. That's something. Uh... She does... The, the subtitle thing comes back to annoying you in the actual game, mainly because they... She says, uh, incoming on your left or whatever, but thankfully you still got the arrows around. They'll warn you what direction they come in. But she also, she also tends to get the direction wrong. She'll say watch out in front of you, but then the demons will come from... The girls will come from, like, the left or something. It'll be a little bit bizarre. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's just worth making a note of. And I'd like to be able to turn up the uh, internal graphics resolution, mainly because the... It actually looks kind of uh, pixelated. Like, I'm running a 8700K and an RTX 2080. I could run this in 4 bloody K if I wanted to, and it would probably do absolutely fine at 90 frames, which is the usual virtual reality frame rate. It would probably be absolutely fine in that sense. But... Yeah, you can't actually turn it up. I even tried turning it up in the Steam VR settings, which is supposed to... Oh dear, I'll fire my ass. Don't you dare. Don't you dare stomp on me. But yeah, it, it, it all looks a little bit pixelated. The fact that you can't turn up the... the game's resolution is a little bizarre. I'm not entirely sure what's up with that. But that said, though, I'm still enjoying the game. It's still fun. The VR implementation is a little bit bizarre. Like, there's this weird little curvature effect that's on the screen that you will notice straight away. It's not hard to get used to. It doesn't make motion sick, but I am, like, 
I have some amazing VR legs, judging purely by the fact that only one VR game ever has made me motion sick, and it was probably because I was running on a way too low a frame rate, because it was on my old computer. Just done more for a bit. While I get the super up, and strips. Oh. That's a little, that's a little bizarre. Now, don't you dare slap me across the... That was a... Look! Girl's hiding behind the thing! And she's gone now. That's unfortunate. The teachers also come after you in this game too for some reason. It's a little weird, but nothing... Actually, to be fair, it's probably less weird. But who cares? But otherwise, the VR implementation is absolutely fine. My one trouble with this game is the fact that it costs $70. Now, I know that this is likely to change over the next few months with, like, Steam sales and what have you. But considering that I... Um, considering that I thought... Galgun might have been a little bit too much for 40. Hi, how you doing? Considering that I thought Galgun might have been a little bit too much for 40. Paying $70 Australian for... I'm sorry, are you going somewhere? Considering that I thought um, $40 Australian was a little much for Galgun Double Piece, $70 or $80 if you want it with the DLC bundle is a little bit more ridiculous, I've got to admit. The gameplay is pretty lightweight, and I imagine that is not something you want to play too much of in one sitting, so I can see the replayability thing being a real factor. But that said, though, if you like the look of it, I'd probably recommend for you to get it on some kind of sale, like 50%. Ooh! Hi! Oh, there's one down there! Okay, hello. And you are invulnerable. Not anymore. Uh, taking lots of damage here, I am. Get that out of the way, sure can. And suck that up in the meantime as well. And here I am climbing on the roof. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. I remember in, the, I remember in um, Gal Gun Double Piece, one of the entrances to the women's changing room was like a bloody sewer hole. It made no sense to be there, but oh well. It... If you like your etchy... There's nothing wrong with a good game of Gal Gun Double Piece. Or Gal Gun 2 for that matter. I don't think Gal Gun... Double Piece has VR though. There is Galgun VR, which is uh, apparently a standalone game in VR. Hang on, I need to... Screw it, let's just go for the easy way out. There we go. Easy done. Oh, hello up there. Yeah. It's cute, the gameplay is fun, although a bit easy and arguably repetitive and it could do to be a little bit shorter on the level side of things, but... I'm sorry, I love Amelia. Uh, it, it's... To say I, I'm not having fun though would be a lie. It's an enjoyable little romp, as all the Gal Guns have been, and by all the Gal Guns I mean the two that I've played. You two aren't going anywhere. Where are you going? Huh? The face they make is adorable.
Actually, I have a feeling it's... <laughs> I mean, I'm not to, actually, to be fair, it's probably going to happen either way, so let's select the ridiculous option. If you insist. I don't even have to say anything, the game's speaking for itself at this point. Too close to the floor, apparently. Pointless, you poor thing. Jeez. Alright, so this will probably put me back to the mission menu, and then we can show off the one last thing this game has in store, which I promise you is even worse. So if we hit up the menu while we're in the room here, we can actually rendezvous. And if you've done a side quest for any girl in particular, you can go and rendezvous with them. Let's pick one who looks... Cute. Oh, sorry, I'll do. So you can actually go to a surprising amount of places. Oh, uh, can I actually go there? Ah, oh, I have to go in the afternoon, do I? That's a little bit bizarre. Uh, okay, that's unfortunate. Maybe, maybe she'll talk to us now. She already likes me plenty. That's unfortunate. Oh well, probably better I don't show that off on YouTube anyway. They'd probably throw me off faster than you can imagine. So, that was a look at Gal Gun 2. It's exactly the same as other Gal Guns. It's perverted, it's ridiculous, it's incredibly cute, and it's fun little rail shooting that's slightly too easy and takes slightly too long. 
Probably not worth 80 bucks on Steam if you want it plus the VR implementation, which is pretty good, almost to the point where the game was made for it in the first place, and I didn't add this on until just now. But it's still a decent enough game, and if you see it on sale for like half off or something like that, and you like the look of it, it's probably worth the time to play. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.